So what we what I have here you know, on the screen is a model with uh, several latent variables. And if I show and hide the indicators and, and their coefficients, I can see that these two variables, latent variables, they are endogenous because there is at least one variable pointing at each of them. So both of these, Fe and Fe, are endogenous. And they are dichotomous. Uh, they are they have two values each, zero and low, and, and high and one for high. Zero for low and one for high. So this is uh, essentially efficiency of teams. This is effectiveness of teams. Proc is uh, use of procedure structuring techniques or project management techniques. And this is electronic uh, communication media variety, the variety of media that the teams use. So I have efficiency. It's, it's measured uh, on, a, on a scale from 0 to 1, which is uh, 0 low, uh, high, uh, 1 high efficiency. Same thing here. I have 0 being a low effectiveness and uh, 1 being high effect effectiveness. Efficiency is how cost effective the teams are, essentially. And effectiveness is um, how successful are the team's uh, outputs in the marketplace. So two endogenous variables that are dichotomous. And these are the results of my analysis with the endogenous dichotomous variables. You can use dichotomous variables in an SEM analysis uh, dichotomous endogenous variables in an SEM analysis, but that will not be a good reflection of the population model that you're trying to assess. And uh, um, so it's not, it's very unlikely to be a good reflection of your theory uh, because endogenous uh, dichotomous variables uh, they they have only two values, and if they're endogenous, there is always a structural error term that accounts for the variation in them that is not accounted uh, for by the predictors, account, accounting for the variance in them. So this variable has one structural uh, error term pointing at it. It's not shown here on uh, the software graph, but it exists. This one also has this structural error term pointing at it. And uh, these structural error terms, they are random variables that have unique variation. So if FE and FE uh, aggregate those structural error terms, they could not have only two values. They would probably have a number of values that is close to the sample size. So what tends to happen is that because I have less variation in these dichotomous variables than I would normally have at the population level, uh, I tend to have suppressed coefficients, uh, particularly the coefficients that point at them. So these three here, uh, 0 0.31, 0 0.32, 0 0.25, these coefficients would be suppressed. I'm going to store these results in an Excel file for later reference. So these are my results here. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I will make sure that I'm using a composite base. Yes, I'm using a composite based algorithm. And what I will do is I will create logistic regression variables that I will use as replacements for FE and FE in this model. And the logistic regression variables will, uh, will actually store probabilities. So instead of FE and FE uh, storing, 
the information as to whether, so these are the F, FA and FE. Instead of ones and zeros, meaning uh, high effectiveness, high efficiency or not, uh, these logistic regression variables will store the probabilities that effectiveness will be high and that, if, and, and that uh, efficiency will be high and effectiveness will be high. So there will be, typically there will be more variation in them. So I'll go to the option explore, logistic regression, probe it because uh, I know that those uh, variables store only two values each. So I would do, first I would do this for FE and note that FE, uh, now it will be a probability variable and because these two variables land variation to FE, they will both influence the probability that uh, efficiency will be high. So both ECUVAR and procedure instruction PROC should be used as predictors for uh, FE, not only PROC. Even though ECUVAR does not directly point at FE in this model, uh, it provides variation for FE indirectly through PROC. So I'll use both. I'll use ECUVAR and PROC. Now, this is a composite-based model. So I want uh, it to have uh, focal linearity variance inflation factors that are 3.3 or lower um, because that is the recommended value for composite-based models because composite-based models incorporate less structural variation in the inner model than factor models. Therefore, the threshold for multicollinearity for them is a little bit lower. And I, I have my local focal linearity VIF here set as a cap for it as 2.5. Um, and, and again, the, the software is enforcing this gap and in, in fact having a local FCVIF 2. of 2.47. Now, this gap is because once I um, uh, include these uh, logistic regression variables in the model, I want the whole model to have uh, FCVIF, so 3.3 and lower. Now, sometimes you have to do this more than once. I did this analysis that I'm uh, demonstrating here more than once. And I, I, I noticed that for me to have uh, a focal linearity variance inflation factors of 3.3 or lower, this gap should be enough. If not, I would have to redo the analysis. So I will then create my logistic regression variable for FE. Now I will click to remove the variable to be converted and I will do the same for FE, effectiveness. Now for effectiveness, I have three uh, variables that influence its probabilities. And uh, so again, I'll keep this cap and uh, I will create this logistic regression variable now for effort. And now what I'll do is I'll go to my model and I will change those two variables and I'll use as indicators, single indicators, the logistic regression variables that I created. So I will, so instead of being measured by uh, dichotomous 
individual indicators. Now they are measured via these logistic regression variables, which measure probabilities. I will save my model. Now I will perform my analysis. And now I get my results. So if I compare these uh, results with the previous results, I can see that they are very different. So here now my R squared for the main dependent variable in the model is uh, 0.56 when pr prior to that, when I used dichotomous endogenous variables, it was less than half of that. Now let's take a look at the focal linearity variance inflation factors. So as I can see, all of them are below 3.3. So that that is um, you know that cap that I used before seemed to work well. So this is my result. Arguably, these results are much better because now my model explains much more variation much more of the variance in the endogenous variables than before. The coefficients are stronger and, and, and probably because the, the path coefficients are stronger and that's, uh, that's the main reason why uh, that's happening. And again, now these variables measure probabilities, the probabilities that um, effectiveness will be high and efficiency will be high. So I will store these results now because I want to show what would happen if I used a factor-based model. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert back to my uh, original dichotomous variables. So I'm going to revert back to the original model that I had at the beginning. With the dichotomous variables. So here I have the dichotomous variables. So this is the original model that I had before. Um, and now if I redo my analysis, I'll get the same res results as before, but I will change my, my analysis. I will choose a factor-based algorithm, CFM3. All of these algorithms are discussed in the user uh, manual. So now I had slightly uh, now I have slightly different results from my original results, uh, just uh, due to the use of uh, the factor-based algorithm. And uh, so the results that I have here are arguably better than the results that I had here in the beginning with the exception of this coefficient, but I have slightly higher, a slightly higher uh, R squared coefficient here. But now what I will do is I will create the logistic regression variables using this model here as a basis. So I'll create two different logistic regression variables using the same procedure. So FE, we have those two predictors. But now I will make a, a change. I will change my cap to a higher number because I, I now, since the model is factor-based, the FCVIFs at the end with the entire mod, with all of the uh, logistic, with the logistic uh, uh, reg regression variables included, everything uh, uh, at the end should yield FCVIFs that are 
five or lower, not 3.3 or lower, five or lower, because that is the threshold that is recommended for factor-based models. So since these are local FCVIFs, I will keep them lower than, than, than five, uh, but higher than 2.5. So I have, I'll, I'll set this one as 3.5 for F. And uh, we'll call this new logistic regression variable F and the F at the end for factor based. I'm sorry, F. -E. And now F, -E, I will do the same that I did before. But again, now the cap is set at 3.5, and I will, again, call it uh, F. -E. I hope I, I called the previous one correctly, F, -E F. If I, if I don't, if I make a mistake and create them with the same name, the software will make the correction for me. So the, if I create them with the same name, the second one will have a two at the end. Let's see. So now I'm going to go to my model definition area. I will show the indicators and I will change them both. Yeah, I made that mistake. So this one is for FE. So I will remove my dichotomous variable, and then I will use this one for FE. I used the wrong name, so I made a mistake. But it's fine. Uh, the, this illustrates uh, the fact that the uh, the uh, software uh, change makes a change if uh, two names, if it two variable names are the same. So I'll use this one. This is for Effie. I, I made a mistake when I created the variable. And for this one, I'll use the one that was actually for Effie. Okay. So now I have essentially what I've done before, but now with a factor-based model. And I'll keep the settings as uh, CFM3. It's one of the factor-based models. And I'll redo my analysis. And now, as you can see, the results here are even better than the result with the logistic regression variables for composites. So now I have 69% of the variance in FA explained and uh, 49 of the variance in FE explained. And uh, let's see if my uh, FCVIFs are under five. This one slightly higher. So for me to fix this, I would have to go back uh, to my uh, logistic regression variable creation and reduce the cap slightly Recall that I set it as 3.5. I would have to set it to maybe 2, 3.4 uh, for both variables. And then I would I would probably get the, the, the correct results. In fact, I will do this now just to illustrate. So I want slightly lower uh, FCVIFs than I had before. So what I'll do is I, I already have my model. Uh, what I will have to do is to revert the model back to the dichotomous model. So this is for Effie. Uh, this one for Effie. I always have to revert it back to the original model if I'm going to create logistic regression variables. So, okay, so I have, I have my original model, but now I will have it set as uh, factor-based. 
So I should have my results, the results that I had before, yes. Um, and now what I'll do is I will go to Explore Logistic Regression. Now create the logistic regression variable. So start with FE. Let's see our proc. And uh, here I'll set the cap to instead of 3.5. And I may have to do this more than once, right? If I want to make sure that the final caps are uh, FCVIFs, uh, the final ones are, are, are capped at five for the entire model. I may have to do this analysis more than once, what I'm doing here. So I will bring it down a little bit to 3.4. Now create, now create with the right name, right? Since this is for FE, uh, then it will be a logistic variable for FE. And I will indicate that it's factor-based and I'll put a number here, three, because this is the third time I'm creating uh, variables, uh, logistic regression variables. So I'll create. And now I will do the same for FA. And again, three predictors for FA. So the local FCVIF cap is set to 3.4, so I don't have to change that. And I will change, I'll call this FAF3. Now I'm gonna go back, change my model. I will edit the variables. And now I'll use the new uh, logistic regression variables that I created. Okay, so now I'll redo my analysis. Now again, I have very impressive results in terms of uh, variance explained. Let's take a look at the full collinearity. So, okay, now it's slightly lower than five, so it meets my expectation that all FCVIFs will be uh, five or lower. And uh, if I look at the results compared to the composite-based model uh, that I had before, uh, again, uh, fairly impressive. So in the, in the factor-based model, here on the right, I have 69% of the variance in in FA explained here I have only 56 and here I have 49% of the variance uh, when I had uh, 37 for the composite based and largely the reason for this is typically a factor based models have higher path coefficients if the path coefficients uh, exist at the population level and they're different from zero at the population level uh, so typically uh, path coefficients tend to be higher in factor-based models, but if I employ logistic regression in factor-based models, setting the cap, the local cap, a little bit higher than I do for composite-based models to meet the requirements uh, of five and lower FCVIS in the entire model for factor-based models, I end up with uh, more variance explained. So by and large, this model explains um, the variance uh, in the endogenous variables uh, much better than the composite-based model, even though both use both of them use logistic regression uh, variables. 
So this concludes this demo. And the main point that I wanted to make here is that uh, results for composite-based and factor-based um, uh, models will differ if we use logistic regression uh, in both cases. And uh, in part, part of the difference will be different ex expectations in terms of the final FCVIFs that I'm willing to accept uh, for both types of models. Tend to be higher uh, for factor-based models. So the cap there would be five. Some people would say that even 10 uh, or lower would be acceptable. I think that's too close to massive multicollinearity that could distort results. And for composite-based models, that would be 3.3, although some would argue that uh, you should uh, use higher ones for there. But the, the simulation uh, analysis that we have conducted suggests that 3.3 should be the cap for, uh, uh, for composite-based models and 5 for factor-based models. So this concludes uh, this demo on this issue.